So I made a video earlier, a while back, about uh, graphing polar functions uh, sequentially like this, instead of just having this graph and, and not knowing how it's drawn or what direction stuff gets drawn in. So, um, and I found a way to, it, it's greatly improved the, the graph. So it used to be like this. And you, this is not nice. This, uh, this, t it's, there's all those huge points there, right? It's annoying. I don't, I mean, it doesn't look nice. This one, this one looks much nicer. It, it's actually, it looks like a curve, a real curve, a, 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 a real, um, it looks like the actual function here. It's, it's like, it looks the same, except you can see it drawn. So, I'll show you how I improved it. So, I'll, uh, Open a new document. I'm going to use the same example, uh, the same curve. So I'll start by graphing it first. So I'm going to graph a polar function. And I'm using the same curve. So I, I already have it here. This big thing is the butterfly curve. And then I've, I've already put in these preset um, conditions here. And that'll turn this butterfly curve. This will give this butterfly curve. So. The next thing I'll do is make a another grass page, and this the secret is, is or not the secret, but the the thing that I changed was I used a scatter plot this time, and that made it much nicer. So um, I'll also define some things that I'm going to use soon. So I'll call this one interval, and that's just going to be representative of. Um, how much of the graph I want to draw. So I'm going to change the settings for it. So I'm going to make the initial value 1, the minimum 1, maximum 30. And this will change depending on what graph, what a function you're trying to graph. Or not, fun, not a function, but whatever polar graph you're trying to graph. The step size, I'll call it, I'll make it 0.1. Okay. And then I'll make it large. And then I'll insert another slider. And I'm going to call this one step. And this will control the resolution of the graph. So I'll make it a minimum of 0 0.01 and a maximum of pi over 8. And the step size should be very small, so 0 0.0 or 0, 0, 001. Let's do zero one, okay. All right. Okay, and then I put this uh, all the way forward, and then I will create the meat of the the polar grapher. I will name this column theta, and it will be equal to the sequence of n and zero from zero to interval with a step size of step and that will give me some values because I already have it defined over there I have these these defined and then this one will be called polar it's R1 of theta this one will be xval and it is polar cosine theta, because the cosine is, gives the x values. And this one is y val, and that one will be polar sine theta. OK, so then I'll go back here and get my entry line. And the x values will be equal to x val. And the y vals will be equal to y val. And I have these nice points, and you'll see if I increase it, it starts tracing it, but I only get points. I want lines as well. So if I right-click on the point, go to Attributes. First, I'll go all the way over and make these thin, just tiny points, and then I'll connect them, and then Enter. And now I have this beautiful grapher. If you can figure out a way to automate all this, you know, making this this thing, this spreadsheet, somehow, some, you may, I don't know, with a program or something, it'd be great. Um, let me know if you can figure it out.